Welcome to Get Started Investing, a podcast where we help you learn to invest in 15 minutes or less. Each episode, we take one real world business story and apply a key investing lesson to help you build your investor toolkit. If you're joining us for the very first time, welcome. We strongly recommend that you scroll up and start at episode one. And just a reminder before we start that we are not experts, we're not financial professionals, and we are not licensed. We are here learning just like you and nothing on this podcast should be taken as advice. But with that said, let's crack on. My name is Bryce. And as always, I'm joined by my equity buddy, Ren. How are you going? I'm very good, Bryce. Uh, good to be back for another episode. Uh, let's get straight into it. The news story that you actually came across this week, uh, Australia's premier science organisation, the CSIRO. Yes. What does that stand for? Good question. <laughs> I actually can't. I, don't, I, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, Commonwealth Scientific and Something Research Organization. Love it. <laughs> anyway. We've almost got there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Should know that. Well, they've published, they, every decade they publish a report, Our Future World, and in this report they've identified seven global megatrends that, quote, hold the key to the challenges and opportunities ahead. Yes. And megatrends is a big term in investing because those massive structural changes that it will – upend the world and the economy and political systems. Um, that That's what we're talking about when we talk about a mega trend. And in those big upheavals often come good investment opportunities. That's it, Ren. And today's lesson is finding ETFs for a changing world. Taking this news article that we found, and I, I guess trying to demonstrate how you can then uh, endeavor to turn that into investment opportunities. Now, we're not saying at all that we agree with all of these mega trends or that they are all investment. Oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> or that they are all investment opportunities or that they'll all play out to be uh, successful. Or that there's even seven here. Or that there's <laughs> even seven there. But it's merely to show how you can use a real world business story and translate that to investment ideas. So let's get into it, Bryce. What are the seven hit me with what's going to change our world? So in the first one was adapting to a changing climate. And this is with reference to the protection of livelihoods, infrastructure and people's quality of life as the climate changes, rising sea levels, building appropriate infrastructure and housing, those sorts of things. So if that's about adapting to the changing climate, the next one is about, uh, I guess, stopping the climate changing any more than it already has. Leaner, cleaner and greener. This is the global push to reach net zero and beyond protect biodiversity and use resources efficiently. So then uh, the escalating health imperative is the third, which is the promotion of health in the face of rising demand, demographic aging, emerging diseases and unhealthy lifestyles. Fourth one, geopolitical shifts, the increase in efforts to ensure global stability, trade and economic growth. Fifth is diving into digital, the rapidly growing digital and data economy. <laughs> <laughs> the sixth, increasingly autonomous, the rise of artificial intelligence and advanced autonomous systems to enhance productivity and outputs across all industries. And then closing out, unlocking the human dimension, the elevating importance of diversity, equity and transparency in business policy and community decision making. So, Ren, nothing too uh, unfamiliar there. Yeah, so they're the seven megatrends that the CSIRO have identified that are going to uh, up upend the world. and. Um, I guess the question is, okay, so they're, they're the trends. Now, how do we as investors find opportunities amongst those trends? And the great thing for us is we don't have to pick an individual company. Phew, that is true. <laughs> the, there are so many ETFs these days, and we've spoken on this podcast and over on Equity Mates about the number of ETFs and how many is too many. But the good news for us as investors is there's plenty of choice to invest in these themes as a whole rather than any particular company. Yeah. The challenge and what we're going to talk about today is how do we actually find those ETFs and how do we navigate them? Because, okay, CSIRO, you're telling me that adapting to a changing climate is a mega trend. I believe that. Uh, but then how do I actually position my portfolio to invest in the companies that are going to benefit from that. Yeah. So before we actually go Ten through that- 10 minutes to go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of big questions to answer there, and we're going to get to the ETFs in a moment. But um, Ren, worth touching on the concept of a megatrend, 
because it's clear that uh, the CSIRO have categorized what really feels like nothing new or um, nothing that we don't really already know or that feels like, you know, th- they're always on. It's a, it's a constant for some of these. So I think there's just a watch out when we come across the term megatrends because it's probably one of the most used terms mm. in investing at the moment. Every product issuer that is trying to sell an ETF or a fund talks about the mega trend that it's exposed to or investing in mega trends. And if everything's a mega trend, nothing is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I think it's just um, when we talk about mega trends, we're talking about these like powerful, disruptive, transformative forces that change industries and the economies. And mm. like climate change is a classic example of a mega trend. It is upending everything. Uh, artificial intelligence and like autonomous systems, another classic example of like a mega trend that will change everything i guess i would challenge the csiro on <laughs> um maybe geopolitical shifts isn't so much a mega trend as just something that is constantly happening the mega trend underneath that might be the rise of china yeah yeah or the rise of india um so i think it's just important that as investors that the reason that mega trends are interesting is because they are these like unstoppable, powerful forces that change everything. Um, But you just got to be careful because not everything in the world is an unstoppable, powerful force. And the classic example I think that illustrates it is podcasting. Mm -hmm. Podcasting is a trend. It's It's taking market share from radio. It's doing all these cool things. There's been a lot of growth in the space. There's money to be made in investing in it but it's not a mega trend, I would say. It's not inevitable. It's not unstoppable. It's not transforming political systems. (laughs) It's a Changing society. The difference between a trend and a mega trend is an important thing, and the use of the word mega trend is a watch out. Yes. As much as I'd like podcasting to be a mega trend. (laughs) All right, but- Maybe one day. How do we find these ETFs? Look, Ren, the simple answer is Google. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, done with six minutes to spare. <laughs> no, I, I think the look. The lesson here is that there are so many ETFs out there, and I'm going to throw to the "What's in a Name" episode that we did quite recently as well, because the important part is that you are conscious of some of the names, and you do look under the hood for a lot of these things. And we can't stress that enough. You've got to do your own dil- due diligence. But just to call out that this is just a list, and we are deliberately giving you more than you could ever go and invest in, so it can't be construed as advice. Or yes, uh, use this as a list to start doing your own research. This yeah. is pure thought starters, and as uh, and to be honest, there's hundreds more that could come under each of these as well. So yeah. Yeah. There, but- there, there is so much out there. So not advice, just a list, do your own research. But in saying all that, Bryce, uh, what we have tried to do is take each of the CSIRO's seven megatrends and find some examples uh, of ETFs that fit under that. So maybe let's start with probably one of the hotter topics in the investing community at the moment, leaner, cleaner, and greener, changing our energy grid and everything that goes along with that. Yes. So, uh, an ETF comes in this space, what feels like almost every day. But here are four that have come across our desk. There's the IS, iShares ESG Aware uh, USA ETF. Its ticker is NASDAQ ESGU. The next is Global X Wind Energy ETF. Uh, the ticker is NASDAQ WNDY. Windy, you could say. Um, and then the third, iShares Global Clean Energy, NASDAQ, ICLN, and then the Vanek Vectors Global Clean Energy as well. Uh, the ETF is clean, C-L-N-E. So there's four to get you started, but plenty in this space if you're interested in the leaner, cleaner, and greener thematic. Yeah, and I think the the next, adapting to a changing climate, you're going to find those two are pretty interlinked. But yeah. um I think there are some, with each of these ETFs, there are some really broad ones. So beta shares have a climate change innovation ETF, the ticker ERTH. General climate change innovation, uh, quite a broad category. And then you'll find that there are more narrowly construed and focused ETFs. For example, Global X's lithium and battery technology ETF on the NASDAQ with the ticker LIT. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is like, it, it, it takes a, tiny chunk of this big mega trend and really focuses in on what on that so 
within each mega trend, there's of I guess a variety of lenses that you can invest in. Mm. Similarly, so let's move on. Escalating health imperative. Now, personally, we talk about our uh, you know our uh, circle of competence, and this is an area where ETFs really sort of help me because getting an understanding of biomedics and all that sort of stuff is uh, not in my circle of competence. But here are a couple of ETFs. There's the iShares Global Healthcare ETF. It's listed all over the place, Ren. It's listed on the New York Stock Exchange. I, I think I think what you'll find with a lot of these big ETF issuers is that they run a global fund and they list it sort of in a lot of places. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. That means the opportunity set is becoming more and more global for us. It's great. It's listed on the uh, ASX here in Australia. Its ticker is IXJ and it's listed on the London Stock Exchange ticker, confusingly, 0JFM. Yeah. And also on the New York, New York Stock Exchange with the same ticker as Australia, IXJ. IXJ. Yeah. Um, let's rip through these. So they're all the major uh, issuers have a just a general healthcare one. So you mentioned iShares Global Healthcare, Vanguard Healthcare ETF, VHT, BetaShares Global Healthcare, ticker drug, love that. Uh, VanEck Global Healthcare Leaders, ticker HLTH. So general healthcare ones for through all the major providers. But then there are some specific healthcare technology ones. ARC, famous. Uh, ARC, Genomic Revolution, ARKG. Mm-hmm. I think that's down like 90%. Yes. <laughs> uh, iShares Biotech ETF, IBB. So again, like you've got general health and then you've got more specific healthcare technology. Yeah. The third uh, is geo, fourth, uh, I'm sorry, is geopolitical shifts. Now, when you're thinking about these mega trends, you've got to think about how they are going to be changing. Where is money going to be spent that actually benefits companies that are in the space? And geopolitics, we're seeing a lot at the moment, this will push defense spending as an example of how you could think about this. So then you go, okay, that's the first step, defense spending, what ETFs are in that space? So there's the iShares US Aerospace and Defense ETF. It's uh, listed on the NASDAQ and the ticket is ITA. Then there's the Invesco Aerospace and Defense ticker PPA and also SPDR have one uh, Aerospace and Defense uh, ticker is XAR. This geopolitical shift story, uh, as we said, it may, it may be better construed as the rise of certain countries, the rise of China, the rise of India. Everyone has a China ETF, all the major issuers, wherever you are in the world. Everyone has an India ETF, uh, wherever you are in the world, there's one listed. Google's your friend here. But um, there's so many. Let's just keep rolling. Yeah. yeah. Diving into digital, no surprises here. You're looking for tech. You're looking for fintech innovation, payments, all these sort of emerging technologies that are changing our world. And there's a specific thematic ETFs that touch on those. Global X, for example, have telemedicine and digital health. The ticker's EDOC. And then ARC always appears in this space. Fintech innovation, the ticker is ARKK. You'll start to get a feel for the ETF providers as well. Global X uh, really love playing in the thematic space, whereas the Vanguard's have more broad-based market indexes. Um, so when you start doing your research, keep that in mind as well. Mm. I think uh, increasingly autonomous, there's uh, a few different robotics ETFs. Uh, Robo Global seems to be the, the biggest player in the space, but they're not the only player. Um, they have, Robo is listed in, the new, in New York and also here in Australia. Uh, there's bots listed on the NASDAQ. Uh, there's iShares Automation and Robotics, which is listed in London and in Tokyo. Um, there's a number of different automation and robotics ETFs as well. And then closing out, unlocking the human dimension, which is all about inclusion and diversity. Uh, there's ETFs that are sit in this space as well. iShares Refinitive Inclusion and Diversity ETF, the SPDR have one called Gender Diversity Index. Uh, and then UBS Global Gender Equality ETF, the ticker listed over in Switzerland, G E N D. EE. Yeah, so look, that, that probably feels like quite a big list. It definitely felt like a big list when we were just reading it out. Um, but I think that the takeaway here is that that was all, we found all of these ETFs simply by Googling the megatrend with an ETF after it. Climate change, ETF. <laughs> Robotics, uh, increasingly increasing automation, ETF. So like all that 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 information is there, the question then becomes, how do you actually navigate what the right investment opportunity is? That's a question for another episode. Yes. But I think 
what we really just want to get across here is when you read about these mega trends, first of all, ask yourself, is this actually a mega trend? But then the actual job, the actual work of finding your investment opportunities these days is no more difficult than a Google search. That's it. So keep an eye and an ear on the news. There'll be plenty of investment opportunities popping up if you just stay in tune with what's going on. Speaking of staying in tune, we do have a daily, uh, a three time a week uh, news podcast, The Dive. So if you're interested in bigger news stories and how those can turn into investment opportunities, make sure you check it out. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, we show you the exciting world of business. Ren, it's been uh, great to chat and we'll pick it up next week. Sounds good.